evening and welcome to Tinkering with Etkelar. Finally, the time has come. Time to do a proper CRT TV restoration. Like most of the recent stuff, another eBay find. A Sony KV-14LM-1E. It was sold as working, including a photo showing it running, so I dared to turn it on for a quick test. Only to be greeted with a blinking power lid instead of a picture. F did I buy a dud? A brief disclaimer up front. I seem to have misplaced some footage from back then, so I had to reenact some parts. Please excuse the resulting continuity problems. The TV did arrive with some dust on the inside. On to the TV's initial status. When I turn it on, the decousing coil makes the expected doing sound and the crackling static tells me that the high voltage on the CRT is where it should be, but there is no visible picture. The internet said, in case of code 5, throw away the TV, it is not worth saving. Well, thanks for nothing. I feared that the CRT might have been damaged in transit, so I gave it a good visual inspection and hooked it up to my CRT tester to confirm that it actually has current flowing on all three electron guns. To summarize, the CRT itself seems ok and most of the electronics too. The service manual lists the error codes. 5 blinks means that the auto gain control IKR, is out of range. That translates to the CRT is not working properly. Well, duh! The controller chip uses a feedback loop to check the current through the CRT and adjusts the RGB signals accordingly to produce a constant image over time, evening out thermal differences as well as aging effects. To find out what's wrong, I started with the basics. Voltages on the CRT. The high voltage works, but there are at least two others involved to make something light up. The electron gun ones and the heater voltage. Let's start by measuring voltages. I did use an old portable scope to protect my regular one, and my very first checkpoint was already promising. The heater voltage was showing a rather strange value, a pulsed AC, which might be normal, but mostly negative and only up to around 2 volts peak to peak. And after the rectifier diode on the neck board, as expected for a negative waveform, it dropped to basically nothing. When I removed the main PCB to took a peek on the underside, following the trace of the heater supply voltage, it became rather clear where the problem might be. Can you see it? The heater is powered from a tap in the flyback transformer and that heavy chunk of metal broke through the PCB in transit. But only the bottom side showed a crack and only right through the heater supply trace. Another one was slightly compromised, but at least partially connected. Since the heater voltage is AC and the severed trace acted a bit like a capacitor, I could measure some voltage on the negative side while the positive one was getting dragged down by the load of the heater. Sheesh! The usual disassemble and clean is up next.
the remote control also gets a good scrubbing. Since the TV runs hot by design, it is mostly a heated tube after all, I replace almost all of the electrolytics. The main power supply one is an odd value that was not available. And after that I fix up the broken traces. Add a bit of super glue for mechanical stability, then remove the solder mask, add flux and solder the traces together. Simple enough. And time to reassemble. The CRT is first. I did not take off the deflection yoke assembly, trying to minimize the adjustments. After plugging everything in again, I turn the TV on. And finally, a picture! Ish. It's quite a bit fuzzy. Hmm. It seems that the tuner, without the signal, also causes the on screen display to go out of whack. I am not used to that. When I switch over to the auxiliary inputs, the display is clear. The power switch showed the most wear, most likely a fingernail impression in the coating. I used a quick dab of spray paint to compensate, but only had black at the time. Well, of all the shades that made at least some sense. So, adding a signal to the input and starting to align stuff. The deflection yoke has a set of rings that contain strategically placed magnets. These will cause the electron beams to bend more in one or the other direction. Easy enough for one beam, but a color CRT has three. Red, green and blue. And those have to meet, or converge, to use the technical term, at the same spot on the screen. Still kinda simple. But where things are really starting to get annoying is that the screen isn't just one point, 
it's a 2D surface and any adjustment you make that improves convergence for one part of the screen will make it go worse for another. So a good compromise is the best you can hope for. Back in the day, they added permanent magnets to the back of the CRT to compensate for these types of errors, but I have no idea where I could find some suitable ones. So best effort it is then. There is also a couple of trimmers on the yoke assembly for additional convergence complications, um, I mean options. And this is also the perfect time to try out my new high voltage multimeter probe. Okay, hmm, about 26 kilovolt? Better not touch that. Before I close the lid on this project, I had to fix the back cover. The plastic has gotten brittle over time, so two of the four screw mounts are already broken. I used super glue to fix them. If that breaks again, I need to come up with some better reinforcing, but I think this plus handle with actual care should do it for now. And now, time for some fun. Firing up the Commodore 64 with some classic games. The TV is not 100% period accurate for the C64 as it is a turn of the millennium Trinitron one, but certainly good enough. And this card connector also supports RGB. Sweet! And that concludes this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. See you next time. When I turn on the TV, the decousing coil makes the coil? Coil? What's a coil? Aye.